What if you could control almost anything in your house in just a tap? In this video, I'll show you how I built my own smart home control panel and dashboard, including how it works and what you need if you want something similar. On this channel, I cover how tech can make you more productive. So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Let's do this. I've always said that a truly smart home is one with automations that just run seamlessly in the background, so you don't even have to think about it. But there are times when you'll want to manually control something or to get information quickly and at a glance. A smart home control panel with a custom dashboard is perfect for this. Let's dive right into what I'm using, starting with the control panel, and then I'll walk through my dashboard. For the control panel, I'm using a Samsung Galaxy Tab A7. I bought this used on Amazon for $134. To mount it on the wall, I'm using this 3D printed wall mount kit sized just for this tablet. It has a cutout in the back if you wanna mount it over an electrical box for a nice wire-free look. I also bought this case on Amazon and it costs $52. The case is attached to my kitchen backsplash using 3M hook and loop double-sided tape. This way, I can easily remove or relocate the control panel without damaging the surface. I'll link to everything I'm using in the video description. When I first set this up, I didn't want to see any charging cables, but I didn't want to cut into the walls either to add an electrical box. So I had the control panel just running on battery. This required me to charge it using a USB-C cable about every one to two weeks, which got kind of annoying. So now I've just plugged it into a nearby outlet and attempted to hide cables behind some small indoor plants and a candle. To turn this Android tablet into a smart home control panel, I'm running an app on it called Fully Kiosk. It's a free download, but if you want to use some of the more advanced features, which you probably will, it displays a watermark on your dashboard, or you can pay a one-time cost of less than $10 to remove the watermark, which is probably worth it depending on how frugal you are. Fully Kiosk has a ton of features. It integrates with Home Assistant, the smart home platform that I use. For example, it allows you to lock down the tablet to just run one app, so your smart home dashboard is always displayed. You can even have it use the tablet's built-in camera as a motion sensor to turn on the screen when you approach it. Or using Home Assistant, you can set any kind of trigger to turn on the tablet screen, such as movement detected by another motion sensor or someone ringing the front door. I have a Ring Alarm keypad just a few feet away from my control panel, and this keypad has a built-in motion sensor. What's great about this is it only detects a small area of motion, which is just what I want so the control panel screen only turns on when I'm really close to it. So I created an automation in Home Assistant to turn on the control panel screen whenever I've just walked right up to it. This was great until my kids became so distracted by a tablet lighting up whenever they approached it that they could not resist playing with it. Until I relocate the control panel to a higher location, I've had to disable that automation to maintain order in the house. Building a smart home usually requires a good bit of compromise when you live with others. Speaking of making this work with the whole family, one thing that everyone enjoys is how the control panel will automatically display a live feed of our doorbell camera anytime someone rings the front door. It's so much faster than whipping out our phones and opening an app, or even checking the thumbnail image on a push notification. If the tablet didn't do anything else, this one automation alone may be worth it. But of course, this smart home control panel can do a lot more, and that brings me to the dashboard that I have running on it. Anytime you wake the device, it automatically displays a dashboard that I built using Home Assistant and the UI Lovelace Minimalist theme. My goal with the dashboard was to provide helpful information at a glance and quick access to manual controls when needed. I also wanted one dashboard that could scale from a mobile phone to a tablet 
to a computer browser. Maintaining multiple dashboards for different form factors can be time intensive and my whole thing is how tech can save time. But I'll be honest, it did take me a lot of hours to put this dashboard together. Of course, it's never actually done, I'm always tinkering with it, but that's part of the fun. All right, let's walk through how I have this thing set up. All right, let's take a look at my smart home dashboard running on my smart home control panel, which is a Samsung Galaxy Tab A7 tablet. So first, the layout. At the very top here, I have five different navigation points for the dashboard. Below that, I have access to sort of home controls for quick information at a glance. The state of the alarm, state of the thermostat, the different locks or the garage door in the house. And then down here, I have different room cards. So if a light is turned on in that room, it's indicated here. If, if the light is off, then I can see that here. And you can see the temperature of each of the different rooms in the house. So what I love about this is just kind of that quick information at a glance, being able to immediately visualize if any door is locked or unlocked, if the alarm is armed or disarmed, if the HVAC is currently running, if you know my wife is at home or not. So uh, this is kind of an overview of the homepage here. But I can jump into, of course, these different entry points like house here. So a lot of my room cards have the same layout of a trend of the temperature and the humidity over time. In the house section here, it's more about just kind of like general controls of the home. So we can access our shopping list here. You can click this and type in a message and it will make an announcement on any of the Echo or Sonos devices in the house. We can control our water heater here, including giving it a boost, seeing how much hot water is available. We can put it into energy save mode. And then here we have our robot vacuum. We can send that on a mission to different rooms or areas around the house. I can see my NAS. And then down here we have all the different smart home batteries and I can see the percentage of those batteries. But I also get an automation that tells me if any battery needs to be replaced because it's low. I don't use this as much admittedly, but it's kind of cool that I could just put in the gas, the price of gas at four local gas stations. So we know which one to go to to save money. Moving over, we have this light and fan uh, section here. So all the kind of main lights in the house, I can control them here with one touch. I can see what's on right now. I have a counter to say, okay, there are three lights on in the house right now, one, two, three, and our fans. So here we can, I can see with the spinning green icon that a fan is currently on in that room. But of course I can also click into it and I can adjust the fan speed or turn it off for any one of them. And for any one of the lights, I could go ahead and just double click into it. If I wanna change the color or the color temperature of that light or just one touch to kind of turn that light on and off. Moving back on the secure tab, this is access to all of our security cameras around the home, our alarm system, and all the different sensors in the house. So I can you know, see a snapshot of a different security camera. I can click into it if I wanna see a live view of that. Um, and then here are kind of all the different door, lock, door, and window sensors in the house. So like here I can see that there is occupancy or motion detected in the, kind of that kitchen and living room space. Going back, I have this energy tab here. I built this to be similar to the energy dashboard that Home Assistant provides, but this is my own version of it because with this, I can click the back button and remain in my dashboard and not have to use the sidebar navigation. So here I can see the energy usage in the home, how much has come from solar, how much has come from the grid, how much is being sent back to the grid. I can even see the consumption of different devices in the house. Uh, I may have to do a separate video just on this if that's something that you're interested in. And then toggle. This one may be a bit confusing, but basically for all of my automations, I have an override option. Maybe you don't want that automation to run for one reason or another. For example, you have an automation for the lights, but maybe you're going to 
bed early because you don't feel well. Well, you can come in here and you can just go ahead and turn on this virtual switch, also called an input Boolean, and that will tell that light automation not to run. So it's nice for me and my wife to be able to come in here and to have control over the automations very easily. So then coming down, these are location cards um, for me and for my wife. And then we have things like the alarm, which you can arm or disarm for here. The HVAC or thermostat could come in and uh, set this to heat or air conditioning and change the temperature. It's currently off right now, but I can see it's, it's at 73 degrees in the house. And then things like, you know, the garage door, I can open and close that. And what's nice is, you know, this animation uh, icon changes over here. So when something is kind of open or unlocked, it goes red. So you can see here, if I um, unlock this garage door, it changes to red and the icon changes. The garage door itself is open and it's red. So basically when I go to bed each night, I wanna be seeing green all the way across. Green is confirmation that everything is locked and closed. So I just like that kind of nice visual indicator. And it's really easy to just come back in and relock or reclose anything here. So then for the individual rooms, you can click into any, into any one of them to get more information. So I can you know, click into the basement, for example. And again, I can see that trend of temperature and humidity over time. I can control the light just in that space. And I can see the status of different sensors in there. Or in this case, we have our TV in the basement. So I can one touch to turn on Apple TV or even enter certain programs. And then if there's a camera in that room, it will show a snapshot. Uh, of what's going on in that room. So that's pretty much the layout for each of these room cards here. Um, again, it shows the temperature and humidity at the top, the devices. I can see if one is on, like this fan is on right now, and I can always just come into it and I can adjust that really easily. And now that is off, or I can turn the lights on, or I can turn them off. So that's kind of how I have these rooms set up and that's repeated across kind of all these sort of key rooms or areas in the house. Now this dashboard is fully functional both for a light mode and for dark mode whether that's on the phone or on a tablet like this. And just so you can see it I'll also show how the dashboard works on the mobile device which honestly is probably how we are accessing it most of the time. So you can see it's a similar layout to what's on the tablet. Again, what I love about this is it's just one dashboard to maintain. I don't have a separate dashboard that I built for the tablet and then a different one for the mobile phone. I just have one and it is dynamically adjustable to scale according to the size of the device. If I was to put my phone into landscape, uh, you can see it actually adjusts into the, the tablet version of the, of the dashboard, but basically, same layout in terms of uh, the five navigation points at the top, house control information at a glance in the middle, and then all the different room cards down below. So just to kind of quickly show what it looks like on a mobile device, again, all those batteries that I mentioned, plus the robot vacuum, water heater, and announcements in the house section, one touch controls of any of the lights that are in the home, and then also for the fans down here as well. Going back uh, to the security tab again, image, images for all the security cameras, status of the sensors in the house, if there's motion in a given space, if you know there's presence detection in there, or if any door or window is open in the house. The energy tab is sort of my built version of the energy dashboard uh, right here. So I can go back over time and look at our solar production. I can look at the consumption of the individual devices in our home and see what's using the most energy on any given day. And then the toggle for the automation overrides. If I don't want the automation to run, we can just turn that on right here. And then of course you can change the state of the alarm, thermostat, garage doors, and all the different locks in the house. I intentionally add friction. I don't want this to be a one touch and then it locks or unlocks. I want you to have to actually go to this screen right here 
and then consciously say, I want to lock or unlock something. Otherwise, it's too easy to inadvertently press a button and then something becomes locked or unlocked or the robot vacuum starts cleaning when you didn't intend for it to do so. Um, and then just picking kind of one of the room cards to jump into here, we can just kind of go into the, let's just say the, uh, the basement bedroom and you can see the temperature and brightness uh, over time here and all the different lights and devices you can control in that room and the different sensors. And if there is a media player, you can control it from right here as well. So that's a look of how my dashboard operates on a mobile form factor. I'm really happy with how this dashboard turned out, but I know there's some crazy advanced setups out there. So let me know in the comments if you're using a control panel and dashboard and any tips that you have for others. If you're interested in creating a setup like mine, but aren't sure where to even begin with your smart home, you'll want to check out the video here. Hit the like button if you found this helpful and subscribe to the channel for tech reviews and tutorials that help you become more productive. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Ooh, I'm not ready for that. <clears throat> Let's try that again. <clears throat>